Welcome into the November 22nd episode of the Lockdown Leafs podcast. I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave Morissuti. The Leafs squander a third period lead and drop another game in overtime. We'll recap that game. Plus, where do the Leafs go from here on the blue line if another top defender is to miss some time? We'll discuss that as well. All that more coming up on today's edition of Locked On Leafs. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Lockdown Leafs Podcast, one-stop shop for all things Leafs. I'm your host, Mike DiStefano from TSN 1050 Toronto Radio, uh, also known as Al's brother on TSN's Overdrive and TSN 1050's Leafs Lunch. Joining me, it's my co-host, Dave Morissuti from Sportsnet, also a writer for the NHLPA. Lockdown Leafs is a daily Maple Leaf-centric podcast, so be sure to subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts from. You can also now catch us up on video format on YouTube, search up Lockdown Leafs and uh, get new daily Leafs content directly to you each and every day. Uh, All Leafs, all the time. Make sure you're subscribed to Locked on Leafs. All right, Toronto uh, failing to pick up the full two points against the New York Islanders last night. Took a 2-1 lead into the third period. A bad giveaway, a little blunder there from Eric Schalgren, and uh, game ends up in overtime, and three-on-three has become this team's kryptonite, Dave. I, I just can't believe I, I was in the Discord chat, literally calling for the Leafs to just be able to make one single pass. That's all I was asking for, and they I could mean, not do that. They couldn't. Like I, I, I don't think I've seen <laughs> in a long time, at least, um, two icings in the first like forty seconds in a shift in three on three overtime. What, what annoyed me about that was just kind of how nonchalant they were about that, too. Like, guys, you're being paid. Nylander and, and Matthews are being paid almost a combined $17 million and could not complete a pass to each other in three or well, three overtime. Yeah, like, Nylander almost gives the puck away. <laughs> oh, and he almost gives the puck away on a break. Yeah, uh, on a breakaway, too. And I'm just like. Like, I would have, I mean, and the problem was, it's like, get them off the ice. Well, you can't because they're icing the puck. Exactly. That's like, the worst he, part he, about he, it. he did give the puck away, actually, and it turned out to be a really good scoring chance, and Shogger was able to make the stop. But, you know, when, when you're making multiple mistakes, though, in overtime, and you're giving opportunities to the Islanders, uh, eventually they were going to score, and they did. Uh, Anthony Pavillier, really nice shot off the rush, ends up beating. Um, Eric Schalgren, and you noted it, you know, the mistake there, the, the lazy play by by Willie Nylander, in a way it kind of cost him a shift because out came Matthews, but it wasn't Nylander that followed him. It was Michael Bunting who ended up following Nylander, who lost his man, Bavillier gets open and, and ends up getting the, the game-winning goal. So, um, But that's what, like five three-on-three overtime games they've lost so far this year. one in five. Probably. One in five, and I think they've lost five in a row. Um, Since and like this one in Dallas, yeah. There's some concerning overall concerning numbers uh, when you look at their 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 play at five on five. It's it, they're at the bottom of the league the last three years. It's not even this season. The last three years, when you look at uh, for the the bottom ten players who've been on the ice for a goal against in three on three overtime, it's littered with Maple Leafs. Littered with them. Um, so that it's I don't know what it is, but they've got to figure something out there. They got to start practicing their three on three play, like because this this can't continue. They're dropping points left, right, and center. I mean that's an extra five points um, that they've lost due to poor play at three on three. And to your point, and I think Mitch Marner said this yesterday in the, his post game press conference, they just got to make the simple passes. They got to make the simple plays and they can't be turned the puck over in, in, in overtime because that's really when you get in trouble. You, you turn the puck over, teams on the counterattack. You're looking at a two on oh sometimes, but a two on one odd man rush. And that's what happened last night and uh, ended up in the back of the net. Um, so unable to get that win. Uh, overall, though, like I actually thought the Leafs 
played well enough to pick up the two points. It's unfortunate that, you know, that blunder by Shalgren in the third period ended up in the back of the net and they had to go into overtime where they just are unable to pick up victories once you get to that point because they actually had a real solid game. Um, I thought they had a lot of really good opportunities. Uh, Sorokin's just unbelievable. Like that guy's so freaking good, man. Like that should have been three, four, one in the third period, but that dude just kept them in it um, long enough for them to make a mistake. And, and they were able to capitalize and, and ultimately win the game. But I thought that Toronto definitely played and, and deserved a better result last night. Yeah. They got, they got goalied a little bit there, but I think this it was another one of those things where, okay, you're getting bullied on the other end. We can't be making, you know, the mistakes on the other end. Any team in the NHL is going to make, make you pay for mistakes. I know the Islanders weren't exactly on, you know, firing on all cylinders in this game, but they'll take, they'll take the breaks that they can get. And <clears throat> they did on that. I mean, Shaw ground. I, that, that's just one, you know, you're you're the backup goalie. You're trying to just don't make those types of mistakes. That's all I'm trying to say. Like you, you can't be the one putting yourself in that situation. And it it, it hurts, but it also speaks to the Leafs had chances to put this game away, and they kind of let their foot off the gas in the last few minutes there. And also that last minute of the of regulation. Like what the heck was oh, that? That's just oh, I don't know what that was. Right. So I was I was in the building, right? So I was there, I was up in press row and and like the, they were actually getting booed. Like people did not like like the, the fact that they just completely killed the last 40 seconds of the game just by you know, just literally pinning the Holding puck, the puck on along the board. board. Like what do you do? Like play to win the game. Show a I, little like I, I just didn't like that attitude that oh we're just gonna hold out for the for well, the overtime. Considering how bad they've played in overtime, you would think like this is the last thing we want. Let's try and get the puck up and, and go and try and score in the last thirty seconds and you know, try and, and bring this thing home and not have to get to three on three. But no, they decide to to pin the puck and yeah, we were looking at each other in press row and they're like, Why like what the hell was that? Like that was just yeah it was it was dumb it was uh, it it wasn't a good brand of hockey to watch during the final minute of the game. Um, bunch of other stuff coming from the game though. Matthews, <laughs> um, you know Tavares, nice power play goal, and uh, there was a fight that we got to talk about. Also, Morgan Riley, um, potentially some news there. Uh, had a knee on knee with Paul Mary, left the game, did not return. Uh, so I'll update. We'll update you on that situation all that and more coming up on the other side but first let me tell you about one of today's show sponsors and that's betonline.net it's your number one source for sports betting info stats and news and analysis get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from football to hockey to basketball soccer esports and more we've got it all at betonline.net and we're the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. You can head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online, it's where the game starts. I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave Morissuti. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. Uh, Toronto falling to the Islanders 3-2 in overtime last night. Um, Austin Matthews scored a goal at 5-on-5. Five five. You know, that's that was pretty good. Considering he only had two going into the game, won his last 16 games, so he was able to score. But it's it's still like it was a, a, a high tip. It wasn't even a you know a patented wrister slap shot deke. Like it, it it just he's still not scoring in ways that Austin Matthews has been known to score. So I guess I'm not going to complain that he scored a goal at five on five because it's something that he desperately needs to start doing again. But we're still haven't quite seen like the Matthews of, of last year show up yet. No, we're not seeing one you no know, him dominate dominate as much, especially, you know I don't know how I, I didn't even look to see how his like shooting numbers have, I mean his shooting percentage is just absolutely dreadful. Well he went into head. the game like sub four percent at five on five shooting, which was awful. But, yeah, and and he's at ten point six on the season, which 
that's still not Austin Matthews. Like he's in like the, you know, 16, 16 to 18 percent range. He was at eight, 17.2 last season. He, I just feel like he's just not getting his off. Like he's just not fighting really for those opportunities that he should be fighting for, especially in front of the net. Like that's where he's. We understand he has that great shot. And it's been a while since we've seen that trademark Austin Matthews bar down shot. And then, so if those aren't work for you, you just got to get to the net and just go for those, uh, you know, easy, I wouldn't say easy, easy goals, but, you know, the, the money making goals. Um, so, yeah, and he's been playing a lot too, right? Like his, his ice, like last night he played about 22 and a half minutes. There's been some games he's been playing 23 minutes. Yeah. I don't know if that has a factor at all. I don't think so. He's used to playing a lot. I don't like the fact that he's playing close to 23, 24 minutes. I don't think he really should be or needs to be personally. But, yeah, I, I'm just uh, – it's a little concerned that we haven't seen a multi-goal efforts, and the last one was against the Bruins. I think that was the only game he had more than one goal. And that's the other concerning part, too. Yeah, yeah, they're not coming in the bunches that we thought they would. And we're now, like, at American Thanksgiving, where it's like, okay, we could start uh, we could start scoring anytime now, Austin, anytime. Um, but what I did like about last night, how about Rasmus Sandin coming to Austin's defense? Uh, ends up Oliver Wallstrom, takes a little bit of a run at Austin. Uh, not fully a neon knee, I guess, but did run into him and ends up, you know, falling down and Rasmus Sandin saw it, didn't like it, stuck up for his teammate, dropped the mitts. And I believe that was the first fighting major of the season for the Maple Leafs. Um, it, it, was that the first one? I'm trying to think. Hold on. I'm trying to think of the two. I, I, I can't sounds think right. Another, I can't think of another fight that they've had. So I believe that was the first fighting major of the season. Regardless, you know, it was definitely Sandin's first fighting major of the year. And not the guy who I expect to drop the mitts and stick up for Austin in, in, in the time and need, but he did, uh, got fed his lunch a little bit, ended up taking a face plant on the ice, which not what you want to see considering Morgan Riley was already in the locker room. Um, but nice to see, you know, somebody stick up for, for their guy, Austin Matthews there. Yeah. Um, it was Sandin's first NHL fight. I think the only one he had was in the, AHL and I was against Colin, who's a little more to his size. Um, I, I did appreciate that somebody did stick up. Also, it's the Leafs, I think, second fight because technically Gio had that fight. Right. A few weeks. Actually, there was two fights in that game where Gio had the fight. So that would have been the Leafs' third fight uh, of the season. But Sandine, um, you, you need to. I, I just like the emotion he showed, right? You know, you also have to. I, I was also like, you're also down defenseman, <laughs> so this is not exact. You love it, but you're also like, eh, doesn't put the Leafs in a great spot now they have another defenseman down uh, because of that. But I, I just think in the situation though, like you have someone has to stick up for Matthews. And look, he some people were giving flack for Austin Matthews for not sticking up for himself at times. I don't want Austin Matthews fighting people. I don't want him fighting. That's you, like players break. I'd rather, I, honestly, I hate to say it. I'd rather see Rasmus Sandin break his hand than Austin Matthews. So, well, yeah, in a way, you would. But I, I think. I mean, I don't want anybody breaking with you. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Like there, there will be a time where I think it it might be necessary for Austin to stick up for himself, but that that certainly wasn't it. So I'm okay with. Uh, yeah, I was okay with Sandy and dropping the mitts and, and getting into the mix. But uh, to your point, like you're talking about guys who are playing way too many minutes. Mark Giordano, 39 years old, had to play 22 minutes and 40 seconds last night, which I believe, and I'm looking this up right now, um, is a season high. Yes, that is a season high this year, 2240. He'd been hovering around 20 or so minutes the last few games with Brody out. Um, but prior to that was hovering, you know, in the teens. So, but Mark Giordano is now going to become 
Like, is he this team's number one defenseman? Actually, let's okay. Let's get into uh, to, to Morgan Riley's injury first. Actually, I guess before we kind of move on and talk about what's next for uh, for this blue line. Um, but before we do that, let me tell you guys about Simply Safe. Uh, did you know that over the holidays, property crimes like burglaries and package thefts spike nationally? That's why our friends at Simply Safe Home Security are offering fifty percent off their award-winning security system, so that more families can feel the same, can feel safe and secure this holiday season. Order your Simply Safe system for half off today and enjoy advanced security uh, and greater peace of mind this holiday season. In an emergency, 24-7 professional monitoring agents use Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify the threat is real so you can get priority police response. Uh, with the top-rated Simply Safe app, stay in complete control of your system anytime, anywhere, arm or disarm, unlock for a guest, access your cameras, or adjust the camera uh, system settings. Don't miss your chance to say big on the only security system that I recommend. Get 50% off at a, any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL. This is their biggest discount of the year, so you won't want to wait. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave Morissuti. Uh, we're hosts here at Locked On Leafs, a daily Maple Leafs centric podcast. So if you're new to the show, it's your first time uh, kind of seeing us. Thank you so much for giving us a chance. Hopefully you've enjoyed the content so far. And if you have, uh, we ask that you please subscribe. And uh, that way you can also hit the notification bell. That way you get the, the new content that we deliver to you guys every single morning, every single day, and it'll be directly to you. Uh, all right, let's talk about Morgan Riley. Actually, do we have the hit? Do you have the, the video of the hit? Can we pull that up really quickly? Because <clears throat> I think we should probably look at it, discuss it, before we talk about what's next for this Leafs blue line. Um, but while you're looking it up, I'll just explain what exactly happened last night. So Morgan Riley... Uh, in the second period, was second the second? period. yeah, in the second period, um, inadvertently, him and, and Nick Palmieri run into each other, a little bit of a knee on knee collision. Both players go down, um, it, with injury. And so, here's the play for watching on YouTube. So, you know, just kind of trying to cut across the middle of the ice, and they both go knee on knee and end up on down on the ice for uh, for quite some time. They're both down for, for you know, a minute or so. Um, and they both left the ice and did not return. So Morgan Riley, um, after the knee on knee, did not return. He will be getting imaging done on that knee today, according to Sheldon Keefe, and they'll have more information on, on you know, the timeline uh, and, and the severity of the injury, whether it, there's a, a serious injury there or not. Like, we didn't get much information last night outside of they're going to just get some Im imaging done today, and we'll find out more. Um, but uh, <coughs> he's never good. We know that it, that is, it's never a good luck. He didn't return yesterday. Um, he w was seen, you know, limping off after the, after that play. Uh, I mean, this blue line does not, cannot, um, afford this injury, right? You already yeah. have Jake Muzzin out indefinitely, uh, potentially for the year. You've got TJ Brody, who's not responding well to his injury with the oblique um, and won't be playing for another week at least. And now you've got your minute muncher, your best top defenseman, Morgan Riley, who took a, a pretty you know serious knee-on-knee -knee collision and could potentially miss some time. Uh, this, this, this is like bad news for the Maple Leafs. Yeah, it, like and Tic Tac Tomar was uh, that was the video I put up and he put down both look okay and I, and it just like eh, I don't know it didn't look well, great. Well, so he he the thing is, so Riley got up and then kind of skated off, but was mm -hmm. hunched over, but did skate off. And then Paul Mary was down a little bit longer. The trainer was out, looked at him, and then ended up skating off. So they looked okay, but then they both ended up going into the locker room, and we didn't see Riley again. So at first, 
yeah, okay, they looked like they were all right, but then obviously it it, it wasn't, and Riley did not return for the game, which says to me, okay, maybe there's something something happened there. I hope not. Like, I hope we get yeah, uh, I hope it's just get a imaging. little yeah, like a little bruise or something, and they come back and say, oh, you know, things look clean. The 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 X rays were negative, and he should be good to join us on the road trip. Perfect. That would be fantastic. But uh, we'll, we'll find out more information tonight. But if, you know, worst case scenario, he does have to miss some time here as they go out on this road trip. They got the Devils on Wednesday, who 13 in a row now could potentially make it a franchise best 14 in a row against Toronto on Wednesday in New Jersey. And then they move on and they've got an afternoon game against the Minnesota Wilds. And then the next night, a back to back against the Pittsburgh Penguins. So, a pretty uh, pretty tough schedule, three and four nights for the Maple Leafs coming up. So, and if they'll they're going to be without Riley, Brody, and Muzzin, dude, that blue line is bleak. Like, what what does this even look like with like it, Geo going to play 22, 23 minutes a night? Like, who's the team? A lot of one? Justin Hall as well, man. Like, that's. You're, it's it's you're like bleak is the right word to use here because uh, uh and and you're gonna see like like this is again where Rasmus Sandin, Timothy Lilligren, you know they were the third pairing. It might become the second pairing at this point, right? Like you got Jordy Ben. Well, like, they got they got split up last night, and for good reason. I I think they needed that pairing just hasn't really been it. And so now you're going to think, okay, you can maybe put Rasmus Sandin with Jordy Ben, and then who are you going to play with Timothy Lilligren? Like, Timothy Lilligren is the one I think that's going to have to step up in this like juncture with Riley if Riley's expected to miss time. Like this is this is the player I'm looking at to say, all right, it's your time to step up. Rasmus Sandin likely will be the one manning the power play duties. In that scenario, well, yeah. I mean, we'll, we're, again, we're this is all speculation until we know exactly the extent of Riley's injury. Something tells me I'm not hopeful he's going to play the next couple of games just because of you know if he's got to get further imaging done on that. That's that's a little uh, that's it just didn't scream like a something that's going to be like minor minor. So. Yeah, like th- it's on these young guys. Like the pressure was put on them with Muzzin and Brody out. Now that gets times two, oh. times three. I look Morgan Riley. Say what you want. I know he hasn't had, you know, the best season, but Morgan Riley was the part of the reason why Justin Hall was out on that three on three overtime is because Morgan Riley wasn't available. Yeah, that's what happens when you lose a guy like Morgan Riley. Like people, I think, take for granted. When you have certain guys, and then when you don't have them, the drop off is real, guys. It's not great, and that's and that's where the burden now becomes on this Leafs team to figure out. All right, come playoff time, if these injuries start piling up, what do they have? And that's why they, the whole idea of trading for a defenseman still is going to be prevalent from now until the end of the season, especially if Jake Muzzin. You have that cap space. They better be. They better use it. That's all I'm gonna say. I know people are talking about adding a forward. If the, you know your your defense, your options on defense are just not as great. You can you can get by a little bit more with what you have up front on the back end. No dice. You have to. I I still think even you know if let's say Stanley and Timothy Lilligren were playing well during this stretch. I still think you need defense just for the sake that you need options. I agree. You just need better depth. And and now you're going into a road trip where if Morgan Riley is unable to join or at least won't be there for the game on Wednesday against New Jersey, I mean, you're going into the hottest building in hockey right now, a team that's won 13 in a row, and your defensive core looks like, what, uh, Geo... Hall, or maybe Geo Lilligren, Sandine Hall, and then Mete Brody, like is it, or Mete and 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 Jordy Ben, is that or Phil Crawl like, and Jordy Ben, like 
Like you're that's your about. that's going to be your six. Those are your that those are your six defensemen that you're going up and, and trying to stop the red hot New Jersey Devils with. I mean that those are all third pair guys. All of them are third pair guys. That's the problem with this group right now. And we don't really expect to see Jake Muzzin the rest of the year. So when you do, it does drop off from Riley to Brody. It drops right off. You do not have a top four defenseman after that. You've got like four third pair guys after that. Five, I guess, if you want to include Jordy Bent. That's why I think getting a defenseman is imperative for if an injury occurs, they at least have someone who could step up in their absence. They don't really have that right now. A lot is going to be on the feet of 39-year-old Mark Giordano, if this is the case. Justin Hall is going to have to play and get relied on to play some, you know, 22, 23 minutes a night. Uh, like you said, those kids, Timothy Lilligren and, and, and Sandine, are definitely going to be relied on um, to play some heavy minutes and, and get some tough, tough matchups on the road. It's oh, it's uh, <laughs> it's not going to look great. And I know that Sheldon Keefe was pretty positive last night saying, oh, you know, the media, when when Muzzin went down, said, oh, they're going to be in trouble, and they haven't been. And then when Brody went down, oh, they're going to be in trouble, and, you know, it wasn't a big deal. And he said, so, well, you know, if if Morgan misses time, you know, we'll be able to get through it next man up. Now, at some point, y- you do run out of dudes, and I think that was kind of your last guy that you could lose um, before the cracks in the armor really would start to show here. I mean, I've I've got a couple of, of statistics that just show how poor and, and, and bleak this this blue line is and this defense is right now. And I mean, that's with the guys that they've had this year, but now with Riley out, I mean, it's not gonna. It's it doesn't look good. It does not look good. Uh, so hopefully, it's not a long term injury, and hopefully, he will be able to join this team on the road trip at some point. And uh, it, it, it looked a lot worse than. Than, than it turns out to be. Um, all right, Dave, good stuff. I think we'll leave it there. Uh, hopefully, again, we'll get some more clarity on the Riley situation. We'll post it on social media on our own. Mine at Mick underscore Canuck, David at D underscore Morissuti, also on the show page at Lockdown Leafs on Twitter. Uh, but that'll do it for us here today. Uh, leave a like and, and a comment down below on YouTube if you'd like. That'd be fantastic. Let us know your thoughts on the show. Um, and let us know maybe some defensemen that you'd be eyeing. I think at this point, we're going to start looking into some blue liners to trade at some point this week, Dave. I think we got to come up with uh, with a power ranking of uh, of blue liners that maybe we should target. So maybe put some, some options down below and we can do some research into those players. That'd be a lot of fun. Uh, we'll be back with another episode tomorrow, folks. But until then, keep it locked right here on Locked On Leafs.